Now we have to get serious. We're being recorded. Oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Back to ones, people. <laughs> okay. The best part of Zoom calls where everyone's like. Rums, get closer to your mic because I can't hear you. I also mumble terribly. I can also get headphones. Is that? I don't know. Well, do whatever you like. Um, I just want you to be. I'll go headphones. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so that's the best. That is the best. <laughs> I really want to see this production. I have not. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen something in the water. I've uh, done lots of work with it as a program officer, and and uh, and I'm. I keep telling Grums, I'm like, I need to see this show. I need to see yeah. it. Yeah. I'm trying to come to Regina. <laughs> We're trying that, to yeah, we need to make that happen. That would be excellent. Yeah. Okay. Been, yeah. Are we uh, are we ready? It's it's 1202 and we have tons to get through. So I really don't want to get too behind. Um, so welcome and good afternoon, everyone, uh, to Creative Saskatchewan's Lunchroom series, where today we're talking about uh, the live performing arts grants programs. Uh, before we begin, I would like to start off with acknowledging that Creative Saskatchewan spans the entire province of Saskatchewan in treaties 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10, which encompasses the unceded territories of the Nahiawak, the Anishinaabeg, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and Dene Nations, and the proud homeland of the Métis Nation. Uh, so welcome. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Karen Jarowitz. I'm a program officer with Creative Saskatchewan. Don't let that fool you. I'm really just a big theater nerd. Um, and with me today are two fantastic guests, uh, and one uh, one is serving as a guest and a host. Uh, so please uh, put your hands together for Mr. Mark Claxton, who is the executive director of the Saskatchewan Association of Theater Professionals. Um, who I harass on a very near weekly basis. Um, and I'll read your bio, Mark. Mark has been working in Saskatchewan as a stage and film actor and as a theater director and producer for nearly 15 years. He has served as SAPPA's executive director since January of 2020. He is grateful for his home on Treaty 4 lands in Regina, where he is currently helping his son with online school and relearning grade 8 math. That's tough. That's a, that's a big enough challenge, I think. <laughs> and uh, Mark will be um, working together with Grums today to be talking about uh, Grums' experiences with Creative Saskatchewan grant programs. Uh, so S.E. Grummet, or Grums, is a queer, transgender theater artist and performer from Treaty 6 territory. After graduating from acting school and becoming increasingly frustrated with the lack of opportunities for queer and trans folks, Grums began Scantily Glad Theater a two-spirited LGBTIQ theater company that works to promote queer artists and stories. For the past five years, Grums has created a body of sex-positive, body-positive queer work. They are the co-writer and performer of Pack Animals, Stum, A Manifesto, and Creepy Boys. Their solo show, Something in the Water, toured to the Adelaide Fringe earlier this year where it won Best Theater Overall in the Festival. Outside of self-creation, Grums also works as a puppeteer and projection designer. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Welcome to you both. And Mark, without further ado, be my guest. Cool. Thanks so much, Karen. I re I've learned already today that I've been pronouncing your last name wrong ever since I've known you. So um, my apologies. So I'm not offended. It's my husband's name. You know oh. what? Yeah, like That's when I got right. married, I hyphenated my name, and it was like I stuck my hand in a bag of Scrabble and just like threw it on the on the table. <laughs> so, okay. I'll apologize to your husband later. Then, cool. Hey, Grums. Hi. Happy to be chatting with you. Thanks for thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Um, also, I'm not in Saskatchewan at the moment. I wanted to say that I'm on uh, the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations, um, and I use they/them pronouns for. I know you know this, and Karen knows this, but for any attendees, if you're typing questions in the chat. My hands get all blurry when I do this. It's very muppety. 
Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Grums. Uh, for the record, for the same purpose, my pronouns are he, him, and uh, happy to be chatting with you. You are about to travel somewhere again, I understand. <laughs> where, where are you headed and why? Uh, so I've been in Vancouver for two months making something new, and then I'm heading to Saskatoon tomorrow, and then we have to hop in a car to Winnipeg, and then my partner's driving to Minnesota, and I have to fly to Minnesota because I can't cross the land border yet. And we're doing a festival, uh, Twin Cities Horror Festival down there with our show Creepy Boys that we've never done in front of a live audience. So we finally get to do it for humans and I'm really excited. That's, uh, that's amazing. Well, best of luck with all of that. Thank you. Um, so um, Karen has already shared a bit from the bio about the company, Scantily Glad, and sort of from where it was born and, and out of what, you know, uh, I guess, um, desire and need and, and um, impulse it was born. Um, can you sum up for us a little bit? Part of the reason we're here, of course, is to talk about your company and its experience with receiving and applying for live performing arts grants with Creative Saskatchewan. Can you sum up that history, that story, as far as your own perception of it? Yeah, so I was introduced to Creative Sask grants um, around the time I started self-producing um, through some other folks in the community like Charlie Peters and Nathan Howe and other like and they were like you should apply for Creative Sask it's uh for your projects it's a bit different than other granting bodies so you kind of have to wrap your head around it in a different way but they really helped me and taught me sort of how to look at your work through a lens for those programs. Um, and I was applying to do a tour of my duo show Pack Animals on the Fringe Circuit. And it was this monster of a tour of like seven festivals and over six months. And it was like, how are we going to pay for this <laughs> is always the question when you're self-producing. And prior to this, I'd only ever either just broken even or lost money doing Fringe. Um, and so Holly and I applied for a market expert and development grant to help fund our posters, our like um, promotional like buttons and stuff. So you can hand them out to people and they'll have something with your name on it. Um, flyers, ads and programs, publicists, like everything to market the tour, as well as a tour support grant to help cover some of the travel like the, all the driving and um, hotels on the way down to festivals. Um, usually at a festival, they'll give you a billet so you don't have to um, pay for a place to stay then. Um, pay ourselves a per diem, pay ourselves a fee, cover some of the like freight of shipping our stuff around um, and just like cover the expenses, the many, many expenses that happen when you like take a show on the road and all of the like unforeseen things that can rise up as well. Right. Um, and then since then, I've uh, kind of gone back to the well every time they have a new deadline and been like, well, let's just apply. Like, I don't know, it's that Wayne Gretzky thing of like, you miss all of the shots that you don't take. And so I'm like, well, let's just like apply for them. And if I don't get them, then that's fine. But if I do, amazing. Um, and so I was stuck in Australia last year during COVID. Um, and while I was there, I went, what if what if lockdown ends in the city we're in and summer happens there and Adelaide Fringe goes ahead? What if I take my show there? And at this point, Creative Sask like wasn't doing any touring grants and wasn't for obvious reasons. And I kind of like went to Karen and I went, this is what I'm trying to do. Is this something Creative Sask can help me with? And I applied for a market travel grant, a market export and development grant, uh, a micro and a macro and a live performing arts production grant. And I got three out of the four to help me take the show to Adelaide. So they kind of puzzle piece together to cover a lot more of the expenses. Right. Yeah. So, so you've had at least two experiences now where you had multiple, you received multiple grants for the same, the same project. Yeah, so it because so Creative Sask will only give you 50% of your total ask. You can't overlap expenses on tour, like on the different grants. So you can't go like, okay, I'm putting my posters on both and then I'll get that's how I'll get to 100%. 
it doesn't quite work like that, but at these big festivals or these big tours, it's really easy to rack up $40,000 in expenses. And um, in order to sort of like split that over two grants, because the maximum ask for some of these programs is $15,000 or $20,000 or, some, or something like that. Um, oh, my brain just fried. Uh, <laughs> it's, I was able to sort of like, all of the expenses never would have fit on one grant. And so a, by being able to like split them across a couple, I was able to like actually do more things with the funding. Like we were actually able to hire a publicist and we were actually able to um, hire somebody to do flyering for us and actually able to like pay for some of the expenses that we were like, how are we ever going to like find a place to stay in Adelaide? And thankfully like market travel was able to give us some money to like take the show there. Um, or like take ourselves there and be able to like stay somewhere and pay for accommodation. So yeah, by, by sort of like puzzle piecing them together, we were able to cover like the, f the not the full budget, but 50% of our full budget. Right. Yeah. And in that, you know, when, when you're describing that and you're listing off all the grants that you applied for, I mean, the amount of work sometimes that has to go into one grant. And for those of us who have written a lot of them, it can feel that can sound really overwhelming, I suppose, right? Like what you wrote mm. four or five, do, does it actually add up to that much? Or is there overlap between applications such that you're there? You know, it's not as bad as it maybe initially sounds. <laughs> I know it sounds like five different grants, but keep in mind that it's all for the same show. So there is overlap in the questions. Of, and if you have a really solid plan of, I want to take it here for these reasons, and this is why it's an important show right now. This is why it showcases Saskatchewan work. This is why it's going to make money. This is why it's like the next step logically. They're going to ask those same questions on pretty much all of them. And then they're going to have more specific questions to that application or to those activities. So for example, live performing arts production grant will have, okay, give us 150 words on your marketing plan. Whereas market export and development will have like, we want like a solid multi-page marketing plan. And so each of the grants sort of have a different focus. And so you're gonna need to like put a little bit more work into those areas for each grant. But overall, if you have a really solid plan and you know what the show is, there's a lot of like recycling and being able to reuse a lot of the work you've done. Um, the same, something that I do is I'll make one master budget of the entire project and then go, okay, what expenses should go on what grant? And sort of taking things from the master budget and going like, well, actually these activities are better suited for this. These activities are better suited for this. Um, it's still a lot of work, but it's a lot less work than writing five grants for five different projects. And it's also that thing of, if you've applied for a Sask Arts Board grant or a Canada Council grant, or even to be a part of a residency or, uh to have your show in a festival like you have a lot of writing about your work about your show and it's a lot easier to be able to recycle that and reuse that and repurpose a lot of that language than having to like make something from scratch every time yeah great you mentioned uh hiring a publicist and so with that market and export development grant um how important was that to you to be able to have a bit of a team right around that that area? I think a lot of folks either assume that they're on their own or just decide they're going to be on their own when it comes to promoting and marketing the work, right? In addition to just making the thing, um, does that was there? What was your team? What, what was your 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 marketing expert team? So I yeah I I started like doing it all myself designing the posters uh, doing the flyers ordering everything doing the publicity making the press release sending it out all of that I've always I've done that all myself and particularly I've found it's it's very easy to send a press release in the city that you live to the media that already knows your work and they're gonna pick up your show. When I go to a festival where there's 1200 shows, they don't care about my work. They don't know who I am. I'm just somebody called Grummo who sent them a, a Word document. Um, so I found that going to other cities, um, having a publicist who knows the media there and has a personal relationship with them is really helpful. So for Market Expert and Development, the team we were able to assemble is we hired a publicist who was really hands-on. So she did reach out to media. She gave away like 
tons of VIP tickets because people love to feel fancy and feel like, oh, I get a VIP showing. And then they're more likely to like, we had like Instagram influencers, like thinking about marketing your show, particularly with work like mine, that's for a younger audience for a queer community that aren't going to pick up a newspaper. Instagram influencers are your best friends. It sounds gross, but <laughs> it's true. Um, and she would reach out to people like that and give away tickets. Um, uh, she was, she hired a photographer to come take sh uh, photos of my first show to make it look like we had this big sold out house and all these people dressed up all fancy and it felt like, oh, this is like the hottest event in town. Um, I was able to hire a graphic designer to redo my posters and make us look like really professional. Um, in the past, I've hired people to make... Uh, I've gotten like video done of my show and then we take that video and we can make trailers out of it. Um, who else have we hired? People to help us flyer because uh, again, I've done it all myself and had to like hawk my show on the street with like talking to people. Um, and when you're like, yeah, having to build a show or like go and do it on stage every day, spending three hours right before your show doing that is very hard um so we hired somebody to do that for us i'm trying to think if there was other people on our team um you could also hire somebody to do like social media um like running your social media throughout that's something that i'm looking at doing more in the future because i feel like i always end up doing it myself and then it doesn't get done well um yeah someone in the chat said do you have a list of grant writers to help with writing the grants um, I know a lot of other people use grant writers um, and they hire somebody to do it. And I think that that's a really good idea if you don't have the time or uh, feel like you need a bit of that extra support. I've always just done it myself. Um, but again, that's like a huge privilege to be able to have the time to do that. So uh, and being able and willing to fail a lot and get told no a lot. <laughs> and get rejected for grants a lot because you learn so quickly after you do it a couple times you get better at it yeah yeah and it's uh, you know this maybe this is a logical time to bring up the whole point around the role of program officers as well right that in a sense if you don't have immediate instant access to a really experienced grant writer you know the program officers are there to to look at things in progress right and help you out with with uh, questions that are coming up for you around it yeah, absolutely. I think every single grant deadline, I have a few phone calls with Karen uh, or one of the program officers, and I just ask, I make a list of questions, and then I just go through them. Um, and the first, there is a learning curve to it, and the program officers are here to like help you through it. The first grant that we got, like the Pack Animals Tour Support Grant, all through that summer, I was like figuring out how to do it well and how to keep track of our spending and how to like do the grant report at the end. And it was like, I learned a lot doing it and I made a lot of mistakes doing it. Um, and then you just get better at it. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, you early on in our chat, you talked about um, when you were first learning about the creative sauce grants and, and you, you described it as a lens through which you sort of have to start viewing your your work. Can you talk a bit about that lens? What kind of lens is it? And how is it different from, you know, the one you wear when you're doing other grants? Yeah, so uh, I think we as artists view our work as our precious art and our precious, um, and it's, it's about the artistic merit of it and how it explores all of these ideas. And I think that that is a beautiful thing to keep very, uh, precious, but then there are times when you need to take that that sweet little gem and go, how is this going to make money? How is this going to further my career, further sort of professional opportunities for myself, my company, the people, the good people of Saskatchewan? Um, and Creative Sask is different from Sask Arts or um, Canada Council for the Arts, where it's less about the artistic merit of the work and the artistic risk of the work and more about like, is your project going to make money? Like, what's the commercial, like, A, what's the commercial potential of this? But also, how is your business, you as the business, the artist, going to grow? And it's, it's definitely like a challenge when you're first starting out to like think about your work through that lens. And I think that my experience from the fringe really 
bridge that gap a little bit in a way that I think is there's a bit more tension for other artists because on the fringe you constantly have to sell your show and you constantly have to like how is this going how am I going to market this you have to be thinking about that all the time and again literally hawking flyers on the street <laughs> um so for the creative SAS grants it's looking at like what are the professional opportunities to come out of this so if i'm taking this on tour um how am i growing my audience in each of the cities i go and how is that going to make it easier for me to tour in future years how am i growing my social media by going to those places and then when i go back to those markets i'm going to have an easier time my business can grow more um, one of the big things about taking the show to adelaide was adelaide has a marketplace where you can uh basically like pitch your show to producers so they'll have professional development opportunities and pitch sessions where you go in and you sit down across the table from a producer and you tell them about your show um and that was a big opportunity for us and i think a big part of like why we got some of the funding was like we can take this show there and it can get picked up for larger touring more international touring more professional touring more curated festivals like thinking about your work two or three years down the line and how is this show going to help you get there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. So in, in, in learning to, to, to coexist with the money paradigm, right? Like yeah. to, to, to make some peace with that. So now, now that you, you, you've gone through that and, and you've received the money, uh, what benefits beyond the money then has that has that led to for you as an artist and for your and for your work? Well, I think part of it is like the Pack Animals tour because we got Creative Sask funding was the only year I ever like was able to pay myself at the end of the project, and it wasn't a ton of money. It was like I think it would have worked out to like just under what we got for Serb, uh, like just under that for the amount of months. But it meant that I could like go away and. Uh, I wasn't flat broke at the end of a tour and having to like pick up a Joe job. I was able to like invest more time into applying for more things, for making more things. Um, and that's really like, that really helped is not being just flat broke at the end and being able to with not only like paying myself, but being able to hire a publicist and you know, pay for posters and have a good graphic design is like, I can use all those pieces for future tours. Like my poster, I'm always gonna have when I tour the show, but I also got, because of the publicist, we got a ton of reviews. And I think it's a, a big part of why we won the award because like awards are very fickle. And I think it's, they're, it's, it's the right person saw the show at the right time. Um, and that's the same with reviews, but it, it made the show feel like I was this big deal and I was this big artist from Canada, from Treaty 6 territory, and nobody in Australia knew where that was um, because I was able to like hire a team to support the show. That's yeah. great. Yeah, tremendous. Um, have there been other, when you, in writing the, the grant applications, I think usually in these things, you know, they're, they're asking you to set out some goals, right? Or, or, or here, here are the objectives or, or here's what we want to achieve. What are some of the things you feel that were achieved that you had in mind when you were, were thinking about it through the grant? Yeah. Um, the, definitely the first tour, like I think our primary goal was just like to build an audience, to build a following. We had this like, we were a pretty new company. We had this new show. We were like a new comedy duo. And that was really achieved. Like, not because we knew we had funds to pay ourselves we were able to donate more tickets to queer organizations too which meant like more p queer people actually got to see our shows which like has effects in the community is able to like build our audience is able to like the the people that needed this show came to see it um and that was the same with adelaide um i also think one of our big goals for adelaide was like being able to take the show to more international festivals, more curated festivals, so that I'm not out there um, having to self-produce and put my neck on the line every time for a fringe season. Uh, and that has been true. We've gotten, like, the show's gotten picked up for curated festivals. 
and we're going to hopefully I'm going to be applying for the new deadlines as well. So I'll be in this with if anyone is planning on applying for the November 15th deadlines, I'll be in that uh, that like two days before panic as all of you um, because we're trying to take the show to Edinburgh next year. So yeah, we were able to accomplish, I think, the things that we set out to with the Creative Sask funding. Um, and it was like a big, big help because I can't imagine trying to do all of that out of my own pocket. <laughs> That's great. Well, we have we have just a couple of minutes left here. Um, you know, we can't get through half an hour without talking about the pandemic, right? Uh, uh, people would be like, "Don't you know what's happening right now?" Um, <laughs> the you <know>. what? <laughs> yeah, the what? Um, what are some of the ways that you personally and your company had to? I mean, you kind of already alluded to one. You, you <laughs> were stuck at the bottom of the planet, right, uh, in lockdown. And, and so you, you, you saw an opportunity and, and, and went for that in itself is kind of a, an amazing story. I, I, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, are there other ways in which you personally or, the, or your collaborators have had to, to shift in the approach to the work or in how you view it to, to accommodate the world we're in today? Yeah, I think everybody at some point has had to pivot to doing a digital showing. It was sort of inevitable of the pandemic. And as much as we give digital theater a bad rap, at least it got artists paid. Like at least the projects happened and artists could get paid. And that is super, super important. Um, yeah, like I alluded to earlier, my partner and I got stuck in Australia during COVID. Um, I went down to see the Adelaide Fringe and to work as a technician and a front of house person um, and just kind of get a feel for the Aussie circuit because it is like we view the sort of consumerism of North American Fringe in a really we're like, oh, it's so capitalistic. And then you go down to Adelaide and you're like, oh, it's so much worse. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to get a feel for it and feel like if is like I wondered, I was like, is there a space for me? I've had a lot of friends take their shows down and just completely lose their shirt. Um, and then we ended up getting stuck in Melbourne and going through a five month lockdown and our show Creepy Boys had to pivot to digital. Um, and then around in the su in the summer, your North American summer, our winter in the middle of lockdown, I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply for these creative SAS grants. We'll just see if I get them. And if I get them, we'll do Adelaide. <laughs> and we got them. And I was like, oh, I guess we're doing Adelaide. Um, because I was like, well, what if we just, we were kind of trying to wait out the pandemic and it wasn't looking any better. And it was like, what if we just stay until Adelaide next year, do that and come back. And, and then it happened. And it was like a beautiful little cherry on top of a really shitty year. And um, like, yeah, this, this conversation, it sounds like, oh, it's always been like smooth sailing in the pandemic. And oh, like, it was a really great thing. But it was also like, so many phone calls on with airlines uh, dealing with canceled flights and lots of panic about like are we going to get trapped in the, like because they shut down state borders there and you'd get stuck in the wrong state and then not be able to go and it was like a lot of a lot of dealing with that but that has definitely i think silver lining of the pandemic is that i'm hoping a lot of us are more willing to do digital and as somebody who is often all over the place like um, being able to just do a zoom call a zoom meeting a zoom audition um and those sort of accessibilities that digital has opened up beyond just like um being able to work from home for everybody i think is a really nice silver lining of of the pandemic right. hi karen hey everybody um i have to wrap things up uh, with this portion, not that I wouldn't love to have you both go on for the full hour because I, I love this conversation um, and I love a lot of the things that you're talking about and I think that they're good for other people to hear. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences, uh, Grums, and your wisdom and Mark <laughs> for, for being, uh, being such a gracious host uh, and presenting with Creative Saskatchewan on behalf of Saskatchewan Association of Theatre Professionals. Um, both Mark and uh, Grums are going to hang around until the end of the presentation. And then um, if there's a chance towards the end, um, type questions in the chat and we'll have a chance to talk about some of those questions after uh, I've gone through some of the program 
requirements. Uh, so brace yourselves, this next little bit is going to be um, an absolute cavalcade of information. Um, and I hope that you are able to um, take it in, but if not, know that we're available for consultation, for chat, um, call us, send us an email, and we, we do Zoom consults as well. So if you wanna have like a face-to-face -face type chat, we're also available for that. So I am going to share my screen and you are going to um, have this fabulous PowerPoint in your happening right now. Um, by the way, this is also being recorded. Um, so if you have um, recommendations or good information um, that you would like to give other people, um, please let them know that they will be able to find this on our website uh, after this session is over. Okay, so this is our lunchroom series. Hooray. Um, let's go. Come on. Oh, I have to actually manipulate my... <laughs> What's going on? Eh, PowerPoint. Uh oh. Now what have I done? All right. Advance the slides. There we go. Okay, so here's some boring stuff. Uh, no, it's not. This is the purpose of our whole program uh, and the purpose of our organization. Uh, Creative Saskatchewan Investment Fund uh, programs are available to commercially viable creative industry projects and endeavors that include music, sound recording, film, television, interactive digital media, craft and visual arts, book publishing, and live performing arts. So today we are talking about a series of grants that are available to live performing arts creators. Uh, so live performing arts grant programs are live performing arts grant production, sorry, live performing arts production grant, market and export development grant, uh, the major category, live performing arts tour support, and business capacity and research grants. So we'll be talking about all of those today. All right, so first off the hop, live performing arts production. Uh, the Live Performing Arts Production Grant assists eligible Saskatchewan individuals and companies in the production of a series of performances intended for paying audiences. Uh, I think that pretty is self-explanatory. It is production support. It is designed to help support um, your company, you or you as an individual, to put on a production for paying audiences. Um, uh, the, uh, a second very popular grant that um, <clears throat> that people do apply for and companies do apply for is market and export development, the major stream. Um, the market and export grant uh, development grant provides support to individuals and businesses for market access and market development opportunities intended to improve visibility and generate sales. Um, so as Brums talked about, um, market access, market visibility was a big part of uh, the tour experiences that they um had planned and their ability to expand that market and to have vis visibility in that market uh, was due to the fact that they had a market and export development grant where they were able to spend money on hiring a publicist who was local, who was able to work um, with the local media, um, who was able to uh, provide them with the proper angles and access to those market opportunities. Okay. Next up, we have business capacity and research. The business capacity grant supports projects that focus on developing business knowledge and improved efficiencies, as well as expanded workforce capacity and business skills, which result in growth, market expansion, and improved profitability. Uh, the research grant provides support to projects that focus on market research and market intelligence activities, identifying commercial opportunities and or emerging technologies. Um, so business capacity programs uh, that you typically see within theater uh, and live performing arts are programs about um, training, business training, um, or being able to hire and train, um, you know, younger individuals to, to become aware of and practice uh, more, more of the business administration side of uh, running a theater company or being a self-producer, mentorship programs. Uh, these are some of the programs that I've seen come through for business capacity, uh, being able to train and or create positions within the company that allow uh, the company to focus on sometimes more creative work or to launch uh, things like donor campaigns or fundraising campaigns. Um, so these are work that's happening within the company uh, that's helping them to grow, helping them to be sustainable, helping them to create funding. 
that lives outside of, of you know, um, provincial and federal grant funding bodies. And research, um, we don't get a ton of applications for research, um, although there is now this new advent of technology working with theater. Uh, and so there may be some research uh, available, projects available out there where um, companies or individuals are interested in incorporating, um, you know, certain aspects of technology into their practice um, and doing research on and, and finding out about those things. Um, that grant is available as well. Um, next up, we have live performing arts tour support, uh, and the tour support grant uh, supports commercially viable touring opportunities for eligible Saskatchewan musicians and theater companies uh, touring Canada and abroad. Um, I know this is not a like a hot ticket grant uh, at this time because of the pandemic. There's not a lot of touring going on, and that's okay. Really, I just want to get you um, acquainted with the programs that we have available and to give you an overview of those programs. So if you have uh, ideas that you want to share or projects, you want to give me a call for a consultation before the deadline. Um, really, that's all I'm here to do today is, is to make sure that you get the right information um, and some insight into how our programs work. Okay, so first and foremost, every single funder uh, will tell you as an applicant go read the guidelines. That's a really important part of what we um, what we do as program officers is, is our guidelines are pretty much like that tells you what you can and can't do with the grant. Um, so it's very important if you're looking up specific grants with Creative Saskatchewan, each grant program has its own set of guidelines. Um, so business capacity has its own, live performing arts production has its own, um, market and export development and tour support all have their own guidelines uh, with different sets of, uh, um, of what's eligible and what isn't. So before you apply for a grant, please take the time to become familiar with the, with the uh, guidelines. Um, okay, I'm going to give you now an overview of the guidelines, assessment criteria, and how to apply. Um, so with the goal uh, for you to see that this program is potentially a fit for the project that you want to put on. Um, so um, just not to make anybody panic or anything, but the deadline to submit for all of these programs uh, is November 15th at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, this is the only intake for these programs that we are having this year. Um, so if you're in uh, the live performing arts industry and you are needing or wanting to submit a grant for a project that's coming up in the future, uh, please know that this will be the only deadline that we'll be having this fiscal year for these programs. Um, all right, so now that you're not panicking, it's fine. Are you ready? <laughs> here we go. All right, so here we are on the website, creativesask.ca. And uh, if you go to this little place called investment programs, here, I'll just show you right here. If you click on that, a drop down menu will come down and it'll say um, live performing arts. And then you drop onto that. And what comes up is um, the page that shows you all the different grants. And then you can click on live performing arts production grant. And this is what it'll look like on the website, uh, which is great. And there's all kinds of information in this particular web page. So let's have a look at it. So here on the web page, you will see there's links to uh, the official fund guidelines. So that's um, the official guideline. Oh, that's not right, but not official fund the grant guidelines. Sorry. This is the wrong picture. Um, so if you want the guidelines for live performing arts production, you click on that and it's a PDF that will open up. Uh, and that's current guidelines for this fiscal year, which is 2021, 2022. Um, if you're looking for general program guidelines, it's a good idea to have a look at this one as well, because it will give you um, some information about overall what's eligible and what isn't eligible in terms of activities and expenses. Um, so have a, have a read with that one as well. Um, but the most important information that you want is in the live performing arts production guidelines. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the eligibility for the live performing arts production grant. Um, so um, I think, you know, you can have a, have a look at this and, and I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Applications must be in support of commercial productions. So what makes something commercial? Are you charging money for tickets? That's it. If you're charging money for tickets, it's a commercial endeavor. Um, and uh, uh, Rums has mentioned, you know, 
it is kind of about are you making money, but it's not necessarily that you have to make um, scads of money um, from what it is that you've put on from your production. Um, it is, is it a commercial endeavor? Does it endeavor to be commercial? Are you trying to generate revenue from what you're doing? And I would say most people are who are producing theater and live performing arts. They are trying to generate a revenue, whether that's, you know, to break even, whether that's to pay for a future production, whether that's to pay themselves as artists, um, you are trying to generate a revenue. So most of you are already producing for a commercial um, endeavor. Production expenses must be directly related to the project um, and incurred during the project timeline. So what this means is if you did a bunch of stuff before you applied, if you took on a bunch of expenses before you applied, we can't um, count those as, as budgeted expenses. When you put your application in, anything from the date of the application going forward with respect to expenses that you've included in your budget, that's all eligible. But if you did things beforehand uh, where you held rehearsals or um, you know, you booked your venue and you put a deposit down on the venue and all that kind of thing, uh, because it happened before the grant was applied for, we can't accept that as a as a as an activity that that's part of the grant. Uh, most funding bodies do work this way; they don't fund projects retroactively. Okay, expenses related to rehearsals, such as artist fees and rental of the actual production and performance space for rehearsals during the project timeline. So this means that this uh, this cost, which I know can be very high, is eligible. So you can apply for 50% of that cost. So for venue rental, for a place to rehearse, you can apply for 50% of that cost. Marketing expenses directly related to the project being applied for, no more than 10% of the total project budget. Um, you can apply for some marketing within this application, although what I would recommend is that you apply for market and export development separately of the production. Uh, there is a small amount of allowance in marketing you can put in this budget, um, and, and that's great, um, but I would recommend also um, applying for market and export development. So uh, also eligible are the production and streaming of live radio plays and live stage performances. Obviously, that's uh, been added um, for the pandemic. Things that you can't do uh, that aren't eligible. Um, you can't apply to host a fringe festival or a theater festival. Um, we currently at this time, Creative Saskatchewan does not have funds to uh, support the creation of, um, uh, of events such as festivals. Um, community theater productions aren't eligible. Um, expenses related to script development, writing and workshopping. Um, and then have a look at the investment fund general program guidelines for any other expenses, things like childcare costs or dry cleaning, things like that that are not eligible. Okay, moving on to market and export development. Um, and we're gonna to talk today about the major um, market ex export development. We, we did in the past host already a lunchroom series that um, had to deal with um, market and export micro, which is the smaller market and export grant we all program we also offer. Both are good programs and both serve uh, different purposes. So market and export major, um, is, is to help cover the marketing of your, your product or business. Um, and so applications to this grant program come from all different sectors, um, but they tend to be, for the major program, a longer term marketing plan. So this is something that would be committed to um, and, and strategically rolled out over a year um, as opposed to just one single project. So this might be, um, if you're a theater company, you're applying to um, receive support with market and export development for an entire season um, or for a short you know, series of second stage productions that you're putting on. Um, this type of support is designed to, um, to encompass a variety of different activities as opposed to just promotion of one particular uh, activity. Um, so yeah, the, and the cap on this one is, um, it's $25,000 um, per fiscal year. And that also includes any micro um, grants that you've already been awarded. So you can apply and receive a micro grant and a major grant within one fiscal year, but the total of those two grants is put together um, to like, just so that you, we just have a funding cap of $25,000 for market and export total. Um, so that's per fiscal year, um, or if you're doing a, a two-year plan, you can apply for $50,000 for two, two years, but you wouldn't be able to apply for market and export for two years. Um, 
And uh, what else do I need to tell you about that? So that's $25,000 or 50%, whichever is the lesser. That's how our programs work. We always operate on a 50% basis. So essentially, that's just ensuring that you have your 50% um, financing ready to go. Um, and that you also, as a business person, have what they call skin in the game. You have money that you're willing to put in and invest in your own project. Okay. So um, let's just talk for a second before we launch into anything else um, about basic eligibility criteria. So um, to be able to apply to our programs, um, there's some basic eligibility criteria. You, uh, as an individual, you need to have filed your income tax return in Saskatchewan in the year preceding the year in which you apply for financial support. So if you filed your taxes in Saskatchewan last year, you can apply for support as an individual. Um, if you didn't, um, you, you, you're currently residing here, um, and that's great, but we need you to have a tax return that's been filed in Saskatchewan the previous tax year. Uh, if you're applying as a corporation, you need to be incorporated, uh, obviously, um, and you need to be sending us with the application your incorporation papers. Um, you have to be incorporated to carry on business in Saskatchewan. Um, and you have to be the majority of whose outstanding voting shares are owned by Saskatchewan residents who live and file taxes in Saskatchewan and are professionals in the creative industries. Um, so whatever that corporation is, whether that's a company or whether you're incorporated as an individual, if you're applying as a corporation, um, you know, that's fine. You just have to send us your incorporation information. Um, and so we, when we receive applications, do scan them for eligibility. Uh, we check them to make sure that they are eligible. Um, but um, sometimes we have to make phone calls where we have to call people and say that the application isn't eligible. Um, so we always want to make sure that you're checking and making sure that you're um, fitting that eligibility criteria before you begin an application. What we don't want is you to, for you to spend time putting together an application uh, without consulting a program officer um, and spending like, you know, two or three hours putting together an application only to hear from a program officer that your application wasn't eligible. Um, and that's like a real big kick in the pants. And I, I get that. Um, so please check, please check the eligibility requirements. Please check um, the eligibility requirements for the grant, please make sure that, that you're able to apply. Uh, and if you're not sure, contact a program officer. We know how much work goes into a grant application. We know. Um, and so it, it's really not great if you put an application in, you haven't consulted with a program officer, and your, and your application isn't eligible. Okay, so this is the eligibility and projects and expenses for market and export development major. Um, so it has to have commercial intent, as do all of our, our um, grant support programs. Um, so it includes engaging services of a publicist or marketing professional, the creation of marketing materials, branding and documentation of work, um, website design, social media and advertising, distribution, travel, accommodation, shipping and or services required to develop and deliver the project successfully. So this marketing is something that is, becomes really, really important um, once you are, are getting your business out there to make money. Um, you want to generate an audience, you want to keep an audience, you want to stay in touch. Um, it becomes such a huge part of, of what you're doing. Um, it, it's a really popular grant within our agency, and we definitely get a higher volume of applications for this grant over any other grant that we offer uh, because it is multi-sectoral. It covers all of the sectors. Um, so we do get a lot of applications for this grant. Um, so the thing to know about marketing uh, grants is we changed our guidelines this year, um, and the purpose behind that was to talk about activities must be in support of projects that would meet the criteria for Creative Saskatchewan production grants. So if you, uh, if you meet the criteria for a production grant, um, that's great. Um, then you can apply for um, some of the other surrounding support programs like business capacity or uh, research or market and export development. Um, if you don't qualify for a production grant, so if you're a service provider uh, and you're looking for market and export development funds to um, promote your business as, let's say, a publicist, um, we, we won't, you wouldn't be able to apply directly to our programs. You would have to be connected with an artist who's um, promoting something and has hired you. So the artist would be able to uh, apply for the grant and pay you with grant funds. Okay, so looking at business capacity, 
Um, so um, examples of some relevant projects, as I already mentioned, workshops, seminars, or training that improve the business skills of yourself, your management team, and your staff. Learning opportunities, including mentorships, work teams, or internships that support industry capacity and job growth in Saskatchewan. Uh, workforce readiness through skill and business expertise development specific to an industry. Um, so this uh, business capacity grant has become very um, popular amongst um, some theater providers and some theater producers in recent years, um, because obviously the topic is, of course, how do we um, connect the next generation of creators and performers to um, the realistic, more business sides of, of running a theater company or um, running that business or producing. Um, and so a lot of these programs that have received funds for business capacity are focused on training and developing mentorship programs that are allowing um, to bridge that gap between the two things. Um, so yeah, um, that's business capacity. All right. Last but not least, live performing arts tour support. How much time do I have? Eight, eight minutes. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so live performing arts tour support uh, is designed to assist with uh, funding for uh, productions or companies that are taking on uh, touring, which is not happening very much right now during the pandemic. But I want you to know that this program is available each fiscal year. Uh, and like Rums, if you're planning on taking on a fringe endeavor where you're going to multiple fringes um, and, uh, and you're touring, it, it can be a great um, support to help you um, pay for the accommodations, pay for um, any sort of travel expenses you have, pay for um, your, your ability to pay yourself to charge performance fees um, so that when you're performing on stage at a fringe, it doesn't always matter how much audience you have or what your box office take is, you're, you're going to be able to pay yourself at least that much um, so you know you won't really be starving. Um, so this program um, has some very specific guidelines um, and, and it is, uh, there's quite a few of them. And so I'm not going to go through all of them because I'm short on time. Um, but if you are interested in looking at tour support, please contact me and we can talk about it. Um, yeah, we've had some successful applications for tour support. Um, and really um, my, the biggest um, uh, sort of draw for tour support is fringe season. Um, so uh, let us know if you have questions. Um, or if you're anticipating um, going to some fringe uh, or touring some fringe opportunities this spring, uh, because the deadline is November 15th, um, you know, kind of have to be a little bit ahead of things. Um, so yeah, give me a call and we can talk about um, tour support. It has a lot of um, eligible expenses. So please read through the eligibility. Um, and yeah. So we talk about financial participation in the project. And so our financial participation, as I said, is always 50% of the project. So each of these grants has a cap, uh, which is the maximum amount of money you can request from Creative Saskatchewan. And that's always 50% of your budget. Uh, so live performing arts, uh, oh, and I put a big spelling error in there, didn't I? Live performing arts production, uh, applicants can apply for a maximum of $20,000 or 50% of the total production cash budget, whichever is the lesser, which means if your production budget is only, you know, 7,500, um, you would apply for 50% of that. You don't have to ask for $20,000 if you don't need it. Um, market and export major has a cap, as we discussed, of $25,000 per fiscal year or 50% of the total production cash, cash budget. And in the case of if you're applying for a strategic plan that covers two years, uh, it's $50,000. Um, here's something you need to know. Creative Saskatchewan will not release funds prior to the applicant demonstrating that the project is fully financed. So if you get a letter that says, yes, you've been approved for this project, but you haven't provided financial information that demonstrates that you're going to be financing 50% of the project, we will ask you to demonstrate that, especially um, if you have funds that you're leveraging from other sources, such as Canada Council or other uh, municipal funding. Um, or, um, I mean, we love it when you have, have other money that you're bringing to a production. That's fantastic. Um, that means, you know, you're working all your angles, you're doing everything you can to, to bring a lot of resources to your project. Um, but you need to make sure that you disclose all of the financial participants in the project when you uh, make the application. Business capacity has a cap of $25,000 per applicant per fiscal year, uh, or $50,000 if the project is spanning over two years. 
Um, we have in our budget these things called in-house expenses and admin fees. Well, what are these? Okay, so an in-house expense is a budgeted expense that you are paying yourself or an employee to perform. If you are the applicant and also the director of a production, your director fee would be an in-house expense. In-house expenses are not bad. It just means that you are paying yourself to do that particular job as opposed to hiring someone else to do that job for you. Um, an admin fee. So an administration fee, um, we add on, it's available to add on to your budget. You don't have to have it if you don't want to. Um, it's paying yourself or an employee for the time spent on administrating the grant. It's funds that you can use, include in your application for preparing the application, keeping records of budgeted expenses and preparing final reporting. Um, so our programs allow for an, an admin fee of 15% of the total budget to a maximum of $5,000. But keeping in mind, if you do add an admin fee, you are gonna be responsible for paying for 50% of that admin fee. Okay, GMS, our application portal. This is where you go to apply for our grants. And some of you have been there already and created a profile and that's awesome. And some people haven't been there yet. And here's what I can say about it. It operates just like any other web 2.0 application portal. You need to go and create a login and a password, and then you need to create a profile. Um, and once you create a profile, you can start applying for grants. Um, it's, um, you know, it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out once you get inside GMS, there's a list of all the grants that are available to your sector. Um, and that's, yeah, that's that's how that works. Uh, we do have tech support available during the day. So if you're having difficulty with applying through our GMS portal, GMS means grant management system. Um, you can call Creative Saskatchewan during business hours, which are 8.30 to five o'clock Monday to Friday. Alrighty, now let's talk about assessment. So uh, every single grant that you apply for has assessment criteria. Uh, these are the questions you're going to be asked in the application, and um, there should be no surprises. We make that available on the website. If you want to know what the application looks like without signing into GMS and creating a draft and all that kind of stuff, just look at the assessment criteria. Everything we ask you in the assessment criteria is what you're going to be asked in the application. You may also be asked to upload other things like a budget or supportive materials such as bios or creative materials, but the bulk of what you're being asked and what you're being scored on is in this assessment criteria. So please make sure that you review that ahead of applying um, so that you know what you're being um, evaluated on. Um, it can help to shape your application, especially when you understand that there's um, point values are assigned to specific questions and some are worth more than others. So every grant has its own set of uh, assessment criteria. So please also ensure that you're reviewing those. I am aware that we are running out of time and I feel awful. Um, so I think I'm just going to stop now and give a chance to maybe address some of the questions that we have in the chat um, and ask Andrea, do, do, do we have a ton of uh, questions here in the chat? Um, it uh, looks like we just had one question from Mary. Um, she's asking, what is the turnaround time for these applications? At approximately what date will we get a response to these applications? Uh -huh. Okay, good, good, excellent. So um, I'm going to stop sharing the chat and I will show you I have a slide for that. Amazing. Aha! So Creative SAS aims to announce the results by eight to 10 weeks after the deadline date. So the deadline date for all of these grants is November 15th. Um, so it stands to reason that you would probably not hear results until the new year. Sometimes we're able to turn that around in a faster timeline, and sometimes we're not. It just depends on um, the jury that we have to put together and some of the logistics of that. Um, but we try to aim for like shorter time within that window, within eight to 10 weeks. Um, so that's approximately the timeline that we're working with this, with this, with these programs. Here's a piece of advice. Don't wait to the last minute. Give yourself lots of time. Um, applications are due at 4 p.m. on the deadline date. Um, so you don't have till midnight to do it. Um, if you need help, please start early. Please call a program officer. Please take your time. Um, so resorts, uh, re resorts, results come out um, via email. Um, so at one time or another, you've probably heard yes and also heard no. 
Um, so if you're successful, you'll receive a confirmation of that. And what you'll receive is a like a short form uh, agreement called a letter of commitment, um, outlining any preconditions, which means we might need some more information from you before we can agree to get you to sign the contract. If you're not successful and your application isn't funded, um, you, you'll get a letter and you'll also get um, a, a, sh a sheet that gives you the scores, how your application scored, um, and consensus feedback from the jury if your application was juried. Um, reach out to us, talk to us. We're not strangers. We like to talk. I especially like to talk a lot. Um, and so <laughs> if you're in the mood for a chat, call on Karen. Um, I like talking about performance and I like talking about and hearing about what you're doing and your projects. Uh, that's very important to me. So, um, and other than that, you can book a video appointment. There's Grum. Oh, Grum's has got to go. Mark's probably got to go. No, I questions? don't. I was just saying, hi, I'm here for questions if people have them. Okay. So last but not least, I don't know if we still have people with us, but um, questions. Does anybody have any questions for, for Grums or for Mark? We've got 10 people hanging in. <laughs> I don't but see no any questions. questions, but just um, a thank you for Mary that this was very helpful. Wonderful. Thank you, Mary. Um, all right. So no questions. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, call me. Talk to me. Um, chat with Mark. Mark knows a few things as well. Um, and uh, and if you see Grums, say hi. Uh, <laughs> just don't bug don't bug Grums to to do your application for you. I there's have not, many stuff going on. Yeah, um, that was Karen and I had a phone call, and Karen was like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> Um, I hope, I, I wish everybody good luck. If you do have questions, please feel free to email me or call me. Thank you both to my host, uh, Mark Claxton, and also to um, the one who agreed to be grilled, Grums. Uh, I, I really appreciate your participation and sharing all of your advice and wisdom with us. And everyone else have a wonderful Friday afternoon. Take care. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, everybody.